get started with the demo. Um, so let me minimize this for now, but uh, hopefully I'll hear it if you guys chat or talk. Let me just. So I'm just going to open up Fido and choose my game and go to edit. And I created this new level in my scenes folder and then inside the levels folder. So I'm going to open this guy up, level one. And so I just got things kind of basically set up. I have a little background uh, set up. I have a tile map to work with and I have a player. And so I'm going to add more components in here as I build out the level. Um, but this is kind of where I'm going to start. And so the first thing I want to start with is some type of uh, guidance and we can use some signposting. Um, but we also need to kind of like show the player where they are supposed to go. So the convention is in a platformer. If we look up like any platformer, like let's look up uh, Mario level one. And then let's see if we can find a frame of the first scene. Is that the first scene? Yeah, that's the first scene. Um, okay, let me go here. Oh no, I just want the image. What is um open image? Okay, so there's Mario level one. Uh, let's look at Mega Man level one. Uh, I don't see the first screen here. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Let's see. Um, let's just say Mega Man. I bet it'll come up if we just look at Mega Man. Nope. Okay. Uh, I think actually this is in the notes, isn't it? Am I just being, this is just like down here. Some, oh no, I have a different Mega Man image. Whoops. Okay. Um, okay. So we have Mario level one. Um, let me see if I can find Mega Man one. Sorry. I that we would see this, but that's okay. Maybe some of you guys can picture it, uh, but I'll describe it. So like Mega Man level one is pretty similar to Mario level one. And there's just like a long platform, but they actually have like a, a wall in Mega Man blocking you from going to the left. And what I want to talk about is this idea of guidance and how we can do it with literal signs as well as, um, you know, implicit signs. So if I run this scene right now as it is, there's nothing really in the scene, but my player can go in both directions. And there's nothing visually that tells my player which way to go. Should I go left or should I go right? And in this case, either way, I'm just going to fall off the platform and die. But we want to tell the player very quickly whether or not they can go right or left. So let's, let's add a scenery node in here. I'm going to add a child node and add a default node 2D and call this scenery. And I'm just gonna add some scenery in here. Uh, so I will um, put in one of my signs. So I'm gonna make a, a sprite. So this is not an animated sprite. So I'm just gonna put a sign in this sprite. So I made a new sprite. I'll call this sign uh, one. And I'll take a texture, uh, go to my sprites and find my signs and click open. And this one's a sprite sheet. So we need to change some of the parameters. So I'm going to go to animation and say the horizontal frames is two, vertical frames is two. And now we have a sign and we can put this sign over here. And now when I play the scene again, now there's a sign and it says go to the right. Okay, so sometimes signposting or guidance is that simple. It's just a sign that says go this way. 
but what can I still do? I can still go to the left. There's nothing preventing me from going over here, right? So what we need to do then is either that has to be intentional. So we have to think about everything that a player can do because players are going to try everything. I'm sure when you guys play games, you look at the boundaries of the game and you think like, oh, can I go over there? And if you, if you can, you're going to try it. That's part of what makes playing a game fun. It's immersive. Uh, so if a player can go to the left, even if we tell them to go to the right, they're going to try to go to the left. And if the result of going to the left is falling to their doom, unless that's like a you know, part of the game, then we don't want them to be able to go to the left. So how do we prevent them from going to the left? Well, we can just put like an invisible block here. Uh, that will prevent them from going that way. So if like the simplest thing I could do is just go to my level, hit plus, get a static body, and just put like, you know, blocker or something like that. And we need to give the blocker a collider. So I'll add, whoops, not a script. So I'll add in, I need a collision shape. And the collision shape needs a shape, so let's do a rectangle. And now this blue rectangle is just a big static box. And if I just put it right here, my player won't be able to go over here. So now if I run the scene, so now I can see that there's stuff over there, but if I try to walk over here, I can't go. And if I jump, there's just an invisible thing blocking me from going over here. Okay, so that's fine. That achieves what we want to achieve, but it's a little unsatisfying because we can see there's this like gap here. So again, there's no one way to do this, but if we want to be consistent, what I should probably do here is just kind of like make it look like there's nothing interesting over here. So if I just fill in my uh, platforms over here, now it just looks like you're coming from nowhere. And so there's no reason to go back. Like, why would I want to go back here? There's nothing that says, like, visually that this is interesting. So we can add in something to block the player, but we also want to communicate to the player visually, like, there's no real reason to go back here. And so now I know that I have to go to the right. You don't have to go to the right. Platformers tend to go to the right. There's, you know, we don't really know why. It's probably just convention, like, Mario was built that way. and so. We just kind of assume that everything is going to go to the right. But you can make things go up. You can make things go down. You can make things go to the left. You can make things change directions in a platformer. It's up to you. But we want to be aware of the conventions and then uh, you know, work within those conventions. OK. So we've done a little bit of guidance. Now let's introduce some mechanics. Um, and so we have a few different mechanics, even though we don't have a ton of stuff in this game. We actually have a few different mechanics to introduce. So, you know, the first thing the player is going to do is walk, but then the next thing the player can do is jump. That's pretty much it. The player doesn't really have any other uh, abilities at this point in our game. So we need something to tell the player, you know, it's time to jump. So the easiest way to do that is just create a gap for the player to jump over. So let's make a little platform here. And with this platform, we have some options like, you know, we can make it an easy jump. That's a pretty easy jump. Or we can make it a more challenging jump. We could see what's the farthest jump that the player could do. Or we could do a series of jumps that get, you know, harder one by one. So let's get rid of this edge of the platform and see if we can still make it. OK, so we can still make it, but that's about as far as it will let me go with my current size of my platforms. So do we want to start the player off on the hardest jump we can come up with, or do we want to ease them into it? So it looks like one, two squares is kind of like you know the, um, the uh, you know, we can make that jump. Uh, that's kind of the hardest jump we can do. So why don't we give them a one square jump? And then we can give them one, two, three, a two square jump over here. 
So we can show them that they can jump, and then we're going to show them that they can jump even farther than that. So now we know a little bit about the parameters of the world. And right now, if we fall off, we just die. But we could give the player you know, a little safety net down here. So if I make that jump, not too bad. But then, whoops. OK, so now I know that you know, I could make it there, although we might be indicating to the player you, know, you actually can't jump that far. So then we might, you know, this might actually be counterintuitive to what our intentions are. So let's get rid of this one. And let's make another jump that's one, two, three, four. And then let's put like a nice platform down here to catch the player. So now we'll have communicated something even further to the player. You know, this is how far you can jump. This is the farthest you can jump. And now I can't see anything. So maybe this isn't so good. I could zoom out my camera a little bit. Uh, but maybe if I don't know what's going to happen at that point, I would just try to jump again. So yeah, we have to be careful with what we're communicating to the player as we play the game. So you can't make that jump, but if there's a jump you can't make, we'll give you a platform down here to land on. My platform art looks a little crappy because they don't line up quite right. I'll fix that later. I don't need to do that right now. OK, so we've done a little bit of guidance. We've introduced our first mechanic. And now let's uh, introduce a new mechanic. Um, so let's see. So we did some signposting. Uh, we haven't really done anything else. So let's, let's keep adding in some mechanics. And then at some point, we'll be able to apply some more principles. Uh, and again, I'm just kind of like going just like creating stuff uh, as it occurs to me. Uh, not every level is going to look the same. And you guys don't have to you know, use the exact same uh, concepts that I'm using here. So feel free to modify this however suits you. Um, so let's give the player somewhere to stand up here, maybe make some more platforms. And then let's introduce our uh, first obstacles. So um, let's see. Let's create a new uh, node to hold our obstacles. So I'm going to make a new node 2D and call this obstacles. Uh, and I'm going to drag this above the player. It doesn't really matter where you put the nodes, but I like to keep the player at the bottom so I know where he is. Um, actually, I have this blocker up here now. Let's put this at the top, because once we get past the blocker, we really don't need it anymore. And so let's add in an obstacle. So I have some uh, instances for obstacles. So I'm going to click on my instance button. And I think my first obstacle is the cactus. So let's add in a cactus. And when I create a new item, it's usually going to be at 0, 0. So I can go back here and drag it over. Uh, but you can also change the position of the item directly using uh, the inspector. So I could move the item over to like 1,000 and then down to 400 or wherever I am right now, and then put the item here. So we'll put a little cactus here. So that's our first obstacle. And maybe I'll duplicate the cactus and put another one over here. And uh, let's put one more cactus over here. And then if the player gets past those cactuses, let's give the player a reward. So let's add uh, another little tile guy right here. And uh, I'm going to put a uh, reward on here. So I'll make a new node to hold my rewards inside of. Uh, and I accidentally put this inside of my tile map. I don't want to do that. I want it to just be part of level one. I'm going to drag that above the player and then call this rewards. And then I'm going to instance one of my rewards. So I'm going to click on the link button. And my rewards are apples. So I'm going to type in apple and just add an apple there. And I can't see it right now. So I'm just going to go over to the position and the inspector. And I think this is like around 2,000. Yeah, there it is. So now I can see it. And so I'm just going to drag it down here. And why not give them two 
uh, apples. So they made it past these cactuses, give them two apples as a reward. So another thing that's really helpful when you're playing, um, when you're testing a game, now my player is like all the way over here and the stuff I'm working on is over here. So I can just move the player to where I'm working. So I can just grab my player. So I grabbed the camera by accident. Let's uh, lock down the camera. Then I'm gonna grab the player and drag the player over here. So this way I don't have to test my whole scene every time. I can skip ahead. The trick is you have to remember to put the player back. So if I go to my player's transform and reset it to zero, zero, if your player starts at zero, zero, that's an easy way to get your player back to the origin. So let's move the player again over here. And so let's start testing our scene a bit. So I want to get past these cactuses. This is my first obstacle. So, you know, players are probably going to say like, oh, I don't really want to run into that. If they try to run into it, they'll get hurt. But right now they have infinite lives. We'll probably reduce the number of lives they have at some point. But um, so it's not too bad. And it's pretty easy to get around these guys. And so I get past three cactuses and now I get a nice little reward. So that's exciting. So we've learned a couple more mechanics. There are some obstacles that will hurt us. And there are also uh, rewards that we can get um, for getting past the obstacles. So that's pretty cool. Let's up the uh, challenge a little bit by adding a new kind of obstacle. So I'm going to do some variation here with a longer platform. And I'm going to add in my bug obstacles that I created. So I'll go to my obstacles and link in my bug. And remember that I have a couple different types of bugs. Um, so I'm going to move the bug over here. I'm going to go to the transform. At this point, I think the position is around 3,000. No, not quite. Oh, it's farther, actually. Let's try 4,000. Oh, OK. So I can't find it. I'm just going to hit F to find the bug. Oh, I went way too far. I don't know what, why I thought it was 4,000. Let's go to 2,000. OK, that's closer. So then I'll hit. F to focus the bug, and then I can zoom in. And so let's put my bug down here. And remember, we have a couple different types of bugs. We have bugs that are going to be alerted when the player is nearby. And then we have bugs that um, will uh, just be moving automatically. So let's make these bugs a little tricky. Let's make them alerted when the player is nearby. And I can't, I have snapping on, so I can't really get the bug exactly where I want. So I could turn snapping off. And now I can move the bug, or sorry, now I can move the bug around wherever. But let's just make it a little bit smaller so I have more options. I'm going to do 8 by 8 grid instead of 16 by 16. That'll give me some more options. This bug is, also has gravity, so it's going to fall onto the platform. And so let's uh, duplicate the bug. I'm going to hit Control D, make a new bug and put it over here. And I'm going to set both of these guys to activate on player. So this is going to be a little bit of a trick because we just saw these cactuses that don't move at all. And so we might think, oh, I can get past this bug. Whoops. OK, let's move my player over to test. So I got past those cactuses, no problem. I got a couple of nice apples to eat. And now I see this bug just sitting there. So, you know, a player might think that thing looks different from this thing. So I don't know if it's going to move or not, but we still have to go over there. So let's jump. And then the bug starts moving and it attacks me. So again, I should have at least enough lives at this point to get over here. But now I also might think, okay, if I kill this bug, if I jump on its little eyes, maybe I can squish it. Okay. So now we've introduced a few different mechanics. And so now that the player kind of has a sense of what's going on in the world, let's give them a couple options. So let's do a little bit of branching. And so we can do a bug area and we can do a uh, we can do a cactus area. Let's actually separate out my well, I could do different areas. 
at a certain point it gets hard to decide how to organize stuff but let's let's leave it as it is for now uh i'll just keep making more cactuses and bugs um, actually, let's separate them out because I want to be able to find them more easily. So I'm going to rename this one uh, Cactuses. And I'm going to make a new node for my bugs. And I'll put the bugs in here. And then the bugs right now is inside the cactuses, so I need to drag this up so it's visible in the main node. Okay, so now I have my bugs and my cactuses separated. So it'll be easier to find those if I want to. Uh, and let's call this rewards apples just to be consistent. Um, again, you don't have to do things exactly the way I'm doing them. Uh, this is just kind of going through the process. So, okay, so we've introduced our basic mechanics. Now let's give the player some choices. So let's go back to our tile map and let's make a platform down here. And we'll also make a little platform up here or let's, yeah, we can stretch this one out and then we'll make some platforms up here. So the player is going to have to choose, do I go up these platforms or do I go down here? And then we can play with, you know, what the player can see. So if we put some apples on these platforms, the player might be more excited about getting those apples. But if we also alternate apples and bugs, then they're going to have to say, is it worth it to get the apples to get past the bugs? So let's do that bit. Um, and I'll just put a bunch of cactuses down here just so it's not completely you know, easy. So let's go down to my cactuses. So now I have to find a cactus and I'm just gonna hit Control D to duplicate and then drag it down here. And let's put it there. And then I'm just gonna make a bunch of these you can actually duplicate multiple ones at once if you want, but it's not too hard just to keep duplicating. So I'm just hitting Control D and then dragging them. And I'm not trying to be 100% consistent. I want this level to be, you know, this part is going to be a little bit more challenging, even though it's probably the lower risk area. So we have a bunch of cactuses down here. And now let's, up here, we're going to alternate between bugs and apples. So. There's some rewards and there's some obstacles. So let's go find my bugs. I'm gonna grab this one. So again, I'm just hitting Control D and dragging. So that's a lot of creating the level is just you know dragging your elements around. So there's my apple. I'll hit Control D and drag the apple up here. So I'm alternating uh, obstacle and reward now. And as you design a level, you're going to start to see that, you know, there are certain patterns that emerge and you can play with those patterns. So you can either continue the patterns or break the patterns to play with the player's expectations. And then for these bugs, I'm just going to have them moving from the beginning. So I'm going to turn off activate on player. So they're just going to be moving around. That's going to be a different type of challenge. Okay, so now, uh, I could throw my player right here, but it's not exactly a safe space to spawn. So I'm just going to leave the player where they are for now. And so now let's see if I can. I'm actually probably not even going to be able to do this very well, but I can't die, so that should be fine. OK, so my player has a choice. Do I want to go up there where there's bugs? Oh, but I see an apples up there too. Or do I want to go down here where there's a bunch of cactuses? So let's try the bugs first. OK, not too bad. OK, that wasn't really that hard. OK, so maybe we need more bugs to make this more challenging. And then this part doesn't exist yet. We'll add this in a second. So what if I did the, uh, whoops, what if I do the cactuses? OK, so this isn't too bad, although I just got hit once. OK, so I, there's kind of like narrow areas to fit in here. But it's not too crazy. OK. So that wasn't too bad. So we could make that more challenging or leave it as is. Uh, you know, we could increase the challenge as the as the level goes. Um, but let's keep going. So we've done some branching. We've done a little risk first reward here. Let's bottleneck. Let's bring it back together. So I'm going to grab my tile map again. And let's just add some platforms. 
going up like this to meet our uh, guys up here. And so they'll meet like around here. And uh, let's see. We'll put, let's put a couple bugs and a couple cactuses up here. So we'll create this like bigger challenge once we get up here. So uh, I'm going to grab this last bug, hit control D, and throw it over here. And then control D again and put it here. And then I'll grab a cactus and hit control D and bring it up here. And so I'll put the cactus here and here and here. So this will be the, the really hard one, hard area. And then once we get past this, let's give the player a little reward. So let's make another platform. Whoops. And let's do like, they won't see it at first. I'll do like a little valley here. But then I'll put a bunch of apples in here as a reward. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this guy and then move it over here. Uh, let's see, it's probably like around 3,000. No, it's a little bit farther. Let's try 3,500. Okay, close enough. So let's put an apple in here. I'll just fill up this whole area with apples. So this will be exciting reward for the player. They'll get to eat a whole bunch of apples. I'll just uh, select all of these and duplicate them again and again and a little bit more. Okay, so that's exciting. Uh, so let's see. Let's move my player over here and test this part. Okay, so Oh, whoops. Okay, so I can jump up here and here and jump here. And then at this point, I'll realize, oh, it's just like, you know, I could have gone that way, but I decided to go the other way. Uh, but you could put like a blocker here so they can't go back if you want. Okay, this I don't know that I'm actually going to be able to get over the cactus. Uh, so I might need to move this down. Oh, I did actually just barely make it over. Okay, so then I have to kill the bug. Oh, I missed the bug. So I definitely need to add some, well, we'll deal with this later. For now, I have infinite lives. At some point, I won't. And I'll have to add some more life pickups. But there I get a bunch of apples, so that's exciting. It's a nice reward. But now I'm stuck in this valley, so I'll have to come up with a way to get out of here. Uh, but let's uh, stop there for a second. Okay, so we've done some risk versus reward. Uh, we've done some signposting. We've done, we haven't really done like foreshadowing, but we did some branching and bottlenecking. We did some layering. I think that's pretty good for now. Um, we might cover some more. We'll do another level design at some point and add a second level once we have some more stuff to add in. But I think we've, kind of used a lot of different techniques and we've used a lot of our components. So let's just stick with this for now. Um, I'll do a little bit of documentation. So for this one, we definitely want to do a video documentation because there's a lot going on. So let's move our player back to the original uh, position. And so I'm just going to click reset to go back to zero, zero. And let's just document this level that we have so far. Um, and I'm going to use the Xbox game bar for this. But remember that if we go to the Open Lab, uh, if you're on a Mac, well, regardless if you're Windows or Mac, there's a bunch of resources on this documentation page for how to record your screen. Uh, you can do screenshots. I'm going to do a video, so you want to do screen recording. And uh, there's videos here for Mac and Windows. Um, there's also some videos on using OBS if you want to do some more sophisticated stuff. Um, since I'm on Windows, I'm going to use the Xbox Game Bar. That's kind of the easiest one to use. 
I'm going to start my scene, and then I'm going to hit uh, the Windows key and G to launch the game bar. I still don't have any sound. We're going to do that next week, so I don't have to worry about audio stuff. So I'm just going to um, click on the recording uh, circle here, not the camera. I'm going to click on the circle recording, and that'll bring up this like capture status. And then when we click back on the game window, we'll start recording. So we just want to document our game so far. And hopefully I'll actually make it through the level. Whoops. OK, so that was interesting to get past these cactuses. I have to be careful with my jumps. And now I get to eat some apples. There's a scary looking bug. And it's coming after me. And I can push it. Uh oh, that one got me. Got me again. Okay, I'm going to give up on that. Let's go up here and get an apple. And there we go. And at this point, whoops, <laughs> okay, died. And I have no way of resetting this. So uh, I'm actually going to have to make two videos because if I close this window, I think the video will stop. Um, yeah, so uh, we should make a reset button soon, but we don't have one quite yet. So let's make another video. This time I'm going to show the second uh, way of going through. So I'm going to start the game bar again and start capturing again. And let's try this again. OK, so I'm going to go through the other way this time. I'm going to try not to fall through because then I'll have to start over. Okay, and I could edit the videos together, but I'll probably just post them as two separate videos. Whoops, ouch. Ouch, okay. Okay, now I have to be careful that I don't fall through. Ouch. Good thing I have infinite lives in this version of the game. Okay. Oops, ouch. Okay. See if I can make this jump. Okay, sweet. Now I can get all these apples. And now I'm stuck. So I'll have to come up with a way to get out of here. But uh, for now, this is a pretty good start. And once I add some more components to the game, like portals and stuff like that, it'll make it easier to go to a new level or do other stuff. But for now, I'll just leave this as is. Um, so I'm going to stop my recording and close my game. And let's save, and I'll just close Godot. And so now I'm ready to post on the Open Lab. Um, so I'm going to click Log In and log into my account. And I'll click the plus button. And let's choose a category. So I'm going to go to categories. And this is the level design. So this is our first level design lab. So I'll do level design. And I'll say my first level. And so let's add those videos. So I can click plus or I can drag and drop. So if I go to um, the file explorer or the finder, uh, the capture goes into this um, captures folder. So let's see, here's the two videos from today. You can see the date on them. So I don't remember which one is which, but I assume this one on the left is probably the one I made first. So let's put that one in. Okay. And then let's put this next one in. And then for this one, since we're working on this level, let's talk about the level design a little bit. So I'll say uh, my level starts by indicating that the character has to go to the right. The character is then challenged with a series of jumps. The last jump is too far, so the character will fall into a safe area. 
Then the cactus obstacles are introduced. After that, the bug obstacle appears and the apple reward. Then uh, the level branches and the player has to has to choose jumping over cactuses or bugs and then it uh, the two branches come together and the player faces bugs and cactuses at the same time and then gets a lot of apples. So that's just kind of a short description of the sequence of the uh, level, um, just to show your thinking. Uh, and, you know, you can make a much longer level. You can add a lot more to it uh, if you want. This is just kind of like a basic setup. Um, so let's go ahead and preview that post. Uh, I still don't know what's happening with this video uh, resolution, but... That's okay, we can see what's happened. We can see the video anyway. Okay, so that video works. And there's the second video. So that looks pretty good. And so once I'm ready with that, I'll just click publish. And uh, that's all I have to do. Um, so that's our first level. We'll do some more stuff. Uh, we'll add a second level after the uh, midterm. So uh, we'll continue to talk about level design a bit. Um, for now, uh, what we're going to do next week is add sound, and then we'll have the midterm. So we'll, for our midterm, we'll have a simple game with uh, just one level, and uh, then we'll kind of build on it from there. Um, so I'm going to stop recording.